Individuals with chronic pain respond to neurofeedback training with varying results. In some cases, pain is reduced significantly or even eliminated. In other cases, only minor reductions in pain result. The best approach is to inform clients of this very response at the outset and work together to closely monitor pain changes from session to session to evaluate progress and determine if continued training is going to be beneficial. Typically, chronic pain sources issue from an injury that is healed, such as sprains and infections, as a continuous source such as arthritis or fibromyalgia, or as an unknown source, such as RSD. In recent times, we have learned that pain networks can become self-sustaining. The constantly stimulating pathway can become permanently altered and begin firing independently of the actual pain sources. The parahippocampal network is a key interface between the body and the brain. It includes key structures such as the insula, the hippocampus, the amygdala, and the anterior cingulate. It is, as we said, a key network that is activated in normal pain response. Repeated exposure to a pain source increases sensitivity in these pathways and over time generates a more intense and longer lasting response. In addition to the brain networks that are affected by pain networks, the endocrine system also becomes activated. The endocrine response to pain involves elevated cortisol and increased norepinephrine. Since the right brain is heavily influenced by norepinephrine, increases in right hemisphere beta frequencies are typical. The body responds to pain with increased sympathetic arousal, especially in the HPA axis. The initial increases in endocrine activity eventually lead to progressive deficits as the system demands become overwhelming. It is common for adrenal and gonad hormones to initially become depleted, and then for thyroid hormones to become depleted. These deficits are reflected in the QEEG map patterns. Hormones tend to control pain through the following mechanisms. Anti-inflammatory action, cellular metabolism, cellular protection, glucose control, immunoreactivity, tissue regeneration, central nervous system functions, receptor binding, nerve conduction, and maintenance of brain blood barrier. Hormones considered critical for pain control from peripheral glands are typically those listed below and include such hormones as cortisol, estrogen, and thyroid. The immune response is part of the pain production cycle contributing to inflammatory processes that sensitize neuronal response. Broadly defined, central neuroimmune activation involves the activation of cells that interface with the peripheral nervous system and blood. Activation of these cells, as well as microglia and astrocytes by injury, opioids, and other stressors, leads to subsequent production of cytokines, cellular adhesion molecules, chemokines, and the expression of surface antigens that enhance a CNS immune cascade. This response can lead to the production of numerous pain mediators that can sensitize and lower the threshold of neuronal firing. The pathological correlate to a central sensitization and chronic pain states. Milligan and Watkins have noted that glia have emerged as key contributors to pathological and chronic pain mechanisms. On activation, both astrocytes and microglia respond to and release a number of signaling molecules which have protective and or pathological functions. <laughs>